What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Gage. Welcome to the channel today. I am very excited to show off my Sword Soul deck profile. I have been really enjoying playing this archetype. It is a consistent, solid, powerful, and just overall well-rounded deck. It is easy to get into. However, there are a lot of different plays that you can take going towards the mid game and end game that really allow you to express your skill as a duelist. And that is why I have been really enjoying piloting the deck. I recommend it because it is something that is easy to get into. The cards have, for the most part, been reprinted. So a lot of the cards are rather accessible. And so I wouldn't necessarily call it a budget deck, but it is definitely cheaper than some of the decks that we will see in the current metagame. So I am excited to show off the deck list, but before I do, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. Now, let's hop into the deck profile. So one of the things that drew me to the archetype was just how uh, cool and uh, honestly well-designed a lot of the cards were. And that starts with three copies of the deck's main monster, Sword Soul of Moyi. So what Moyi does is essentially on normal or special summon, reveals a Sword Soul or Worm monster, and then special summons a Sword Soul token. And then while it's in the monster zone, the person who summoned it cannot summon monsters from the extra deck except synchro monsters. So as you can imagine, this is essentially a synchro-based strategy. It doesn't mean as though that you can only do synchro summoning, as there are opportunities for you to play other types of monsters in the extra deck, which you will see. However, for the most part, you are going to be synchro summoning most of the time. It also has a secondary effect, where if it is sent to the graveyard as a synchro material, you can then draw a card. So overall, just a very very solid monster. The fact that it helps get your plays going as well as uh, gets you an additional draw, which will either be uh, another engine piece that you may need uh, for later down the line to uh, continue to make plays uh, after your turn has already been set, or if you need to draw into things like hand traps to be able to help stop your opponent from making plays. Uh, the versatility is just endless, and you have to play three copies if you are considering this deck. I am also playing three copies of Sword Soul Strategist Long Yuan. This is uh, another monster where you can discard a Sword Soul card or a Worm monster to special summon it, and then you could special summon a Sword Soul token. And while it's in the monster zone, again, you are synchro locked. However, if this card is sent to the graveyard as synchro material, you can then inflict 1,200 damage to your opponent. So that burn damage does actually come up quite a bit, helping to put your opponent within range to be able to kill them that much easier. But the fact that it has the ability to special summon itself means that you can oftentimes use the Mo Yi to reveal the Long Yuan, then go into a Synchro 8 play, and then special summon the Sword Soul Strategist Long Yuan by discarding a Sword Soul card or a Worm, and then now you have access to Synchro 10 plays. So this is a very good extender, and you have to play three copies if you are playing the deck. And then I'm playing two copies of Sword Soul of, Ta of Taya. Uh, this is a very good card. Honestly, there are instances in which I want to play three because it's just so good in the grind game. However, uh, it allows you to banish a Sword Soul card or a Worm Monster from your graveyard to special summon a Sword Soul token. And then while that token is in the extra uh, monster zone, you are again locked to the Synchro Monsters. If this is sent to the graveyard as synchro material, however, you can send a Sword Soul card or Worm Monster from the deck to the graveyard, which is really good. We are playing 10 Yi Monsters in this build, so it's really nice to be able to, when you synchro this off, to go and start loading your graveyard with those 10 Yi Monsters to have some additional effects at your disposal. Uh, what's very great about Taya is that 
Uh, as you can see, it requires cards to be kind of in the graveyard in order to get its utility, which is why I don't play it at three copies. Uh, however, because of the fact that it is a wind, it means that you are able to go into something like a Baxia, and Baxia takes advantage of the fact that it requires monsters of different attributes to take full advantage of its effect, and Taya is a wind. So we'll keep that in mind as we talk about Baxia a little bit later on. Uh, however, I, uh, for now, the safe number to play is definitely two. However, I can very much see arguments for three because of just how good it is in the grind game. I am also playing three copies of Incredible Ecclesia the Virtuous. This, if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, allows it to special summon itself. And then once per turn, quick effect, you could tribute the card for cost to special summon a Sword Soul monster from the deck. Uh, this is just an, an, an incredible card. I mean, the fact that you have the ability to gain access to your Moye if necessary, or if you want to get into your Taya later in the game, it helps you to do so. I do wish that it was a Sword Soul in name. Uh, that way it could be discarded off of things like Long Yuan. Uh, but you can't have everything. Overall, it is just a very solid card. Uh, a lot of the times I'll just end up starting with something like this. Uh, just because it does end up becoming Ash Bait for your opponent. Um, and yeah, uh, the fact that it can Special Summon itself uh, means that it is also just a very good card for helping you to play when you are going second. So uh, three copies of Incredible Ecclesia is highly recommended. And that is it for essentially the Sword Soul and Honorary Sword Soul cards. We're going to talk about the 10 Yees. I am playing three copies of Ashina. If you control no effect monsters, you could special summon this card from your hand. Uh, so this uh, essentially gets you a body for free. That then allows you to uh, link link itself away to go into a Monk of the 10 Yee, which I am playing in the extra deck, uh, which is where its second effect comes up, where if you control a face-up non-effect monster, you can banish this card from your hand or graveyard to special summon a 10 Yi from the deck. So again, just very good at being able to help you continue to uh, essentially extend your plays. And the uh, ability for you to uh, control a face-up and non-effect monster uh, is pretty... It comes up a lot because of the fact that you are playing the Sword Soul of Moye and the Long Yuan. They are going to be special summoning tokens, which of course are non-effect monsters, which means the ability is more live than people recognize. So three copies of Ashina is just uh, very good uh, for not only getting more worms for your uh, for example, for your Long Yuan's effect to be able to discard and special summon itself, but also it's just a solid card uh, for helping you to be able to uh, extend and get more bodies onto the field. I am playing two copies of the Shuda, just a very solid card because if you control no effect monsters, you can special it from the hand, and if you control a face-up non-effect monster, you can banish this card from the hand or grave to target a card your opponent controls and return it to the hand. So having access to non-destruction removal is very uh, versatile. Uh, it's very good at being able to just help remove some of your opponent's bigger threats. And so I have considered playing this card at three just because it is just a really good card, uh, again, for helping you to play going second. So uh, two is where I've landed for now. Uh, it's a worm that could be discarded off Long Yuan. And overall, uh, it can be special summoned off of the Ashina. I, I just really enjoy playing the Shuda uh, and bounce back and forth between two and three copies. Uh, it just kind of really just depends on, on how I'm feeling. And then two copies of Ten Yi Spirit Adhara. If you control no effect monsters like the others, you can special it from the hand. And if you control a face-up non-effect monster, you can banish the card from your hand or grave to target a banished worm monster and add it to your hand. So this is just fantastic at being able to recur monsters that are banished. Uh, this allows you to recur some of the uh, Ten Yi monsters that you are banishing off of their effects. 
uh, there are going to be instances in which you uh, use your Qi Xiao from the extra deck to banish one of your monsters, like a Long Yuan, to negate one of your opponent's monster effects, and Edhara is really good at being able to then add back the Long Yuan because uh, they're all worm monsters, uh, and, and getting that back to your hand so that you have a play for the following turn. Uh, so that is why I play two copies, because it is just really solid for being able to, again, uh, have a grind game, and I feel like in uh, the modern metagame, your deck needs to be able to have access to grinding if it wants to be able to compete. And that is it for the 10 Gs. Uh, now to talk about the hand traps, I am playing three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. What's more to say, it is the most versatile hand trap in the game. Uh, this deck really wants to make sure that it can uh, survive if it is going second. So I do highly, highly recommend uh, playing Hand Traps. And of course, Ash Blossom is just the most generic one that you can be playing. I'm also playing three copies of Effect Veiler. Again, just uh, you want to be playing as many cards to stop your opponent. Effect Veiler is generic enough to where I can merit playing it in a deck like this. Three copies of Nibiru, the Primal Being, being able to tribute off uh, your opponent's monsters, assuming that they special summon at least five, well, summon at least five times during the turn, uh, paired with something like a Veiler. Uh, it can honestly be game-ending for your opponent. Uh, you really want to just make sure that you're playing the best hand traps in the game, and uh, Nibiru just so happens to be one of them. And then an honorary hand trap being three copies of Infinite Impermanence. Uh, there's that third copy there. Uh, yeah, uh, again, you uh, this deck really, really needs to be able to make sure that it can survive it if it's going second, and Infinite Impermanence being able to uh, negate one of your opponent's monster effects, uh, both on their turn and on your turn, assuming that you control no cards on your side of the field, is just very versatile. Um, and of course, it is important that you are playing a card that does not play into Triple Tactics Talent. So uh, Infinite Impermanence is, again, just a staple hand trap that you can be playing in your deck. And speaking of Triple Tactics Talents, I am also playing that as well. Uh, this is, again, a deck where you want to make sure that your plays go through if you do just so happen to get hit with a hand trap, which is most of the time going to happen, uh, you are then able to punish your opponent. If you have the ability to extend already, you can use the ability to draw two fresh cards. If you already have an extender, you could use it to look at your opponent's hand, which is uh, just very valuable, having the ability to know what your opponent is playing and then play around it. Uh, there is a reason why this card is just so powerful uh, at having three uh, essentially ban-worthy effects on it is just incredibly powerful, uh, and I can't recommend it enough. I really enjoy playing this card in the deck. I am playing three copies of Sword Soul Emergence. Uh, it simply adds a Sword Soul monster from the deck to your hand. Or, if you control a Synchro Monster, you can add a Worm instead. Uh, if it is banished, you can target a Sword Soul Monster or a Worm uh, to increase or decrease its level by 1 until the end of the turn, helping to modulate your monster's levels to help you either get into stronger or weaker extra deck monsters, uh, depending on what you need in that particular moment. So, three copies of Emergence is uh, a very good searcher for the deck. I'm also playing three copies of Pot of Desires. In this deck, we are playing three copies of almost everything. So that is the one of the reasons why I was actually considering bumping Taya up to three copies, just because I really don't want to risk potentially banishing both copies. If only one is banished, it's not the end of the world. But if both are, then it can be really uh, detrimental because, as I mentioned, you really want to have access to Taya for the grind game. Uh, Pot of Desires in this deck is just too good of a fit. The fact that you are playing three copies of everything means that the chance of you banishing anything that is relevant uh, is pretty much non-existent. 
Uh, we're also playing the uh, Chen Ying and the extra deck, which gains uh, attack uh, for every single card that is banished. Um, it, it, it's, it's just a very powerful card. You really want to make sure that you're playing it. It literally says, draw two cards, uh, and there's a reason why Pot of Greed is banned, so there's no reason to not play Pot of Desires. And then the one copy of Sword Soul Blackout. This is searchable off of your Chi Shao, and it has the ability to target one worm monster you control and target two cards your opponent controls and destroy them. It is just very, very powerful. Uh, a lot of the time, you're going to want to ex uh, exhaust uh, your Chi Shao's ability, and then it's pretty much just a vanilla monster on the field uh, that's not really doing anything, so you could use the Blackout uh, to target uh, your Chi Shao and then target two cards your opponent controls and get rid of them. You don't have to think about them. Uh, usually, if you time this properly, it means that you are going to be able to put yourself in a very favorable position, and uh, I can't recommend it enough, just being able to play the one copy. Uh, unfortunately, if it gets banished off the desires, it is what it is. It's not that big of a deal. You went plus two regardless, uh, but if you just so happen to have the access to search this beforehand, and then you pot of desires, well, now you're really off to the races. So yeah, uh, the one copy works, and that's essentially it for the main deck. So to quickly go over the extra deck, I am playing two copies of Chi Shao, just kind of one of the main Sword Soul extra deck monsters. If it's Synchro Summoned, you can add to your hand or banish a Sword Soul card from the deck. And then you could quick effect banish one Sword Soul card or Worm Monster from your hand or grave and target one other effect monster on the field and negate its effects. So the fact that you have the ability to quick effect negate on your opponent's side of the field is just very strong. He's a 2800 beater, and he is just very easy to get into uh, off of your Moye, just being able to, you know, normal summon the Moye, get the token, synchro summon into the Chi Shao. Now you have the ability to search for a Sword Soul card, and then draw a card. So just Bread, uh, very standard bread and butter combo for Chi Shao, and yeah, you have to play two copies in my opinion. I am also playing one copy of Barone de Flore, very easy to get into off of the Long Yuan, uh, having the ability to target a card on the field and destroy it, and then once while this card is face up on the field, you can quick effect negate the activation of a uh, card or effect and destroy it. Uh, it also has a second ability, which does actually come up in this uh, deck, because during the standby phase, you could target a level 9 or lower monster in your grave to return this card to the extra deck, and if you do special summon that monster. So, say you already exhausted your negate, because you can only use the negate once while it's on the field, not once per turn. So, a lot of the times, I will exhaust the negate, then in my standby phase, return this to the extra deck, targeting something like a Moye in my graveyard. Now with this back in the extra deck, I can then use my Moye, and if I just so happen to have a Sword Soul card or Worm in my hand, I now have the ability to get the token, and then essentially start to make my plays all over again, and potentially make the Barone again later on in the game. So that is just, uh, that second effect is just very good in this deck in particular, because the opportunity for you to be able to make another Barone comes up frequently enough to where it does warrant, um, you know, just being able to play the one copy. I'm also playing two copies of Baxia, Brightness of the Yang Zin, Zing. Just a very beautiful, beautiful card and a very powerful one at that. When it's Synchro Summoned, you could target cards on the field up to the number of different original attributes of Worm Monsters used for the Synchro Summon of this card and shuffle them into the deck. So as I alluded to earlier, it is very good uh, with 
Taya in particular because of the fact that Taya is a wind. So if you use the Taya and the token, which the token just so happens to be water, that's two attributes. So if you use that to go into the Baxia, that means you're able to target two cards your opponent controls and return them to the deck, which is just a very powerful ability. In this day and age, the graveyard is essentially like a second hand. So being able to deny your opponent uh, to have some of their cards go to the graveyard and just go straight back to the deck can actually be very detrimental. And if you're able to make a second one and just shuffle all of your cards, uh, your opponent's cards back into the deck, it means you're really not going to be leaving them with many resources. Uh, and so that is why I do play two copies. It does come up and I definitely recommend playing them. I am also playing Yazi, very powerful in its own right. Your opponent can't target it with card effects. And then you can target a Yang Zing you control and a card your opponent controls and destroy them. Uh, and if you do have a worm that is destroyed, you could special summon a worm from the deck. So the fact that it has recursion is also very good as well. So I highly recommend playing the one copy while it doesn't come up enough. If you do rec uh, if you do recognize that your opponent is playing cards that just so happen to target, uh, then this is very good because it denies your uh, your opponent the ability to interact with it. I am playing one copy of Dragite. This uh, essentially has the ability to negate a spell and trap. So if I do recognize that I am going and playing against a matchup in which I do anticipate that they play uh, a lot of spells and traps, maybe I'm playing against Runic, for example, then it may be uh, favorable for me to go into this as opposed to going into a, an effect negator, for example, right? So uh, Dragite is just a very good utility. Uh, this deck is able to play a plethora of different types of synchro monsters because of uh, how versatile the uh, the mechanic is, right? The, the fact that the Sword Souls, it's not like they're necessarily uh, tying you into any specific attributes or names or anything like that. So Dragite is uh, very good at just being a nice toolbox in a pinch. I am playing Draco Berserker of the Ten Yi. When your opponent activates a monster effect, quick effect, banish it. Just, again, a very solid card. There are going to be times in which maybe just removing your opponent's cards uh, and banishing them as opposed to sending them to the graveyard is going to be ideal. Um, and it's also just pretty beefy. Uh, it gains... <clears throat> if this attacking card destroys an effect monster by battle and sends it to the grave, it gains attack equal to the destroyed monster's original attack and can make a second attack during the battle phase. So this can honestly be a game ender on itself. And so I definitely recommend playing at least one copy. I'm playing one copy of Cheng Ying. This is the one that allows you to, for each banished card, and that goes for your opponent's uh, banished zone as well, it gains 100 attack and defense, and monsters your opponent controls lose 100 attack and defense. If this card would be destroyed uh, by battle or card effect, you can banish one card from your graveyard instead. And if a card is banished, you can banish a card from both your opponent's uh, uh, field and graveyard. So this is just an insane card, honestly. Uh, the fact that it has built-in protection, gains attack, and then has the ability to banish cards uh, from, uh, from your opponent. It's honestly just a very, very strong option. And there are going to be times in which maybe you want to go into this as opposed to going into your Baron because of how powerful he really is. Uh, he is a very sticky threat, and I definitely recommend playing him at one copy. I am also playing Qi Xing Long Yuan. This, uh, if it's synchro summoned, uh, if you synchro summon another worm monster, while this monster is on the field, you draw. And, and then if your opponent special summons a monster, you can banish one of those monsters, and if you do, inflict 1,200 damage to your opponent. And when your opponent activates a spell or trap, you could quick effect, you can banish that card, 
and inflict 1200. So very, very powerful at being able to inflict burn damage to your opponent and get rid of some of their threats. It's very easy to banish cards with this deck, uh, which again is just a very powerful mechanic to have at your disposal. The Graveyard, as I mentioned earlier, is a second hand, so you want as many cards as possible to be able to banish your opponent's threats and remove them from the game entirely. So I definitely recommend one copy of him. And last but not least, I for the uh, Synchro Monsters, I'm playing Psychic and Punisher. While your life points are less than or equal to your opponent's, it is unaffected by your opponent's activated effects. And once per turn, you can pay a 1,000 life points to target one monster you control and one card your opponent controls and banish them. At the start of the battle phase, you can make this card gain attack equal to the difference between your life points and your opponent's. So the fact that it has the ability to uh, lose life points uh, and then destroy cards means that uh, a lot of the times you're going to be able to make it so that your opponent cannot interact with it because it will be unaffected by card effects. So, uh, well, activated effects, right? So Psychic and Punisher is honestly a game ender. And when the opportunity arises itself to where you can get it to the field, uh, it's essentially going to be a card that tells your opponent that they are no longer able to interact with you. So Psychic and Punisher is just a very, very powerful card. Lastly, I am playing three copies of Monk of the Ten Yi. Uh, we are playing the Ten Yi monsters, and this is just the perfect card to be able to link them away to get them into the grave so that they have access to their graveyard effect. Uh, if I had uh, an SP, I would definitely recommend maybe just cutting one of them. You don't necessarily need all three copies. Uh, this would definitely be a SP Little Knight. Um, when they get a reprint, I'll definitely be sure to throw that in. But for now, the third monk is fine, uh, just in case if I need it. And then the last card is going to be a Shaman of the Ten Yi. To discard a card, target a worm in the grave, and special summon it. So again, just you want to make sure that you have recursion and the fact that the Shaman of the Ten Yi allows you to bring back your worm monsters means that Again, you are going to just be able to continue to extend your plays to make it so that you survive in the grind game. So that's it for the extra deck. I'm going to quickly go over my options for the side deck. I'm playing three copies of Ghost Spell and Haunted Mansion. There are going to be times in which maybe if you feel as though something like a Veiler is not as relevant uh, in your matchup, or maybe the Nibiru isn't relevant in your matchup, uh, and you're playing against something like Labyrinth uh, or, you know, decks that just so happen to utilize the graveyard more often, then Ghost Spell is a solid card to be able to swap out some of your hand traps that might not be as relevant. I'm playing three copies of Evenly Matched. Uh, again, you want to be able to survive going second. So if I know that I'm going second, I can side out some of the hand traps that I don't think are as relevant and go into a board breaker approach. I don't know at what point uh, everyone just kind of deemed that this card was okay. This is very much a ban worthy card, just being able to, you know, essentially banish almost all cards your uh, opponent controls face down. Uh, just having access to a bomb like this is just something I cannot pass up playing in my extra deck uh, pretty much ever. I'm playing two copies of Lightning Storm and one copy of Change of Heart. Uh, again, uh, this deck really just wants to make sure that it can survive if it's going second. So I'm playing just a bunch of very good cards that are good at going second. Uh, Lightning Storm being especially versatile just because of the fact that it can destroy uh, spells and traps. Uh, you definitely don't want to uh, be caught in a situation in which you're playing against a back row based strategy and do not have access to back row removal. I'm playing three copies of Forbidden Droplet. Uh, this is just especially good in this deck because of the fact that you have cards that have extra effects when they are sent into the graveyard in particular. So Forbidden Droplet means that a lot of the times you're going to be not only setting up your own graveyard, but also negating your opponent's monster effects at the same time. So it is very versatile in this deck in particular. 
And then last but not least, three copies of Dimensional Barrier. Just a very good card for if you know that you are going first and you're playing against a deck that particularly relies on a specific summoning mechanic. If you're playing against a uh, deck that just so happens to exceed summon a lot, or maybe you're playing against Branded, where the, you know they are going to be uh, playing a lot of extra deck monsters that are of the fusion summoning mechanic. Uh, just having a card like this uh, is essentially a turn skip in those instances. So guys, thank you so much if you managed to stick around this long. Uh, this has been a very fun deck for me to play, and I have been very excited that I had the opportunity to share my build with you. Uh, what are some of the techs that you are playing in your build? What are some of the ratios that you're playing? Uh, I've seen some very interesting builds out there that I'm going to try and incorporate myself. I've seen builds that, uh, newer builds that have started to utilize things like the Super Heavy Samurai engine uh, that look very interesting. So I definitely want to learn a lot more about the deck and different cards that you have the ability to play in it. And yeah, uh, this is essentially it from me. Again, thank you so much. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, take care.